Welcome to the Beamsville Church of Christ online ministry. Services are presented on YouTube, Facebook, and our website one week following recording. This week's video is titled Thanksgiving and Appreciation and is pulled from our archive. It was recorded October 10th, 2021. Thank you to Mike, Glennis, and Don for being part of the video. The scripture reading is Psalm 136, 1-26. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, again, this is a usual weekend in Canada where we uh, pause and celebrate with family and friends and especially with God and to be thankful for the country we do live in and uh, the blessings that come from being a citizen in, here in Canada. If you're looking in from wherever you are this morning, whether it be near or far away, there's a time of Thanksgiving is like every day of our lives and to realize that we have spiritual blessings from God to be thankful. So we don't really need a special day or holiday, but Canada marks out for the blessings we receive from the land and around and from others. So... Thankfulness is going to be more or less the theme of the service, and uh, we're grateful to God. Um, of course, what are you thankful for, right? As we grow older in the faith, we are thankful. I'm thankful for my dog, or I'm thankful for my cat. goes into, I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my sight. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for getting through the pandemic. It very, so it's a deeper time of reflection. May we give the glory to God, and when we find the things in our lives that we can be and should be thankful for, and, and be thankful and help others, and show them the, the thankfulness that live, that's in our lives. There's only a, a few announcements. We have a couple of anniversaries, and they're big ones. I saw that uh, on Facebook that John and Joan, 68 years. I mean, and then, uh, so they've been married for that long. Like, that, that's, wow. I'm like, <laughs> that's like, like I told my buddy once, uh, well, it was a long time ago, like 25 years. I said, see, 25 years to it could have been out by now, but the, in terms of uh, it could have done time and been out, but that was just a joke. But that was uh, that was at 25. If they last 50, they deserve each other and they deserve God's blessing. But happy anniversary to those two. And John and Connie, I have no idea how many years have they been married. It's got to be up there too. So God bless them. And there's a birthday. Who's the birthday? Tina. Oh, I better not forget that one. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tina. Anyways, may we go to God and uh, prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful to you for this weekend. A joyful Thanksgiving for the blessings that we have received and do receive on a daily basis and will receive in the future that we just don't know about. Father, help us to be powerful instruments of your will Help us to be joyful, not just this weekend, but the rest of, the rest of our journey with you and our lives in this world. The world needs a lot of thankfulness and joyfulness at this time. Father, we love all, all people and people that are closely dear to the church. We, they're struggling and we struggle because they struggle. Help us to lift each other's burdens to you. Thank you for the blessings we have in Christ Jesus to be a family of God here in Beasles. Help us to go up and make a difference. Help us to be your people. Please be with Don as he shares a message this morning. May we gain from it. May we learn from it. And may we put it into practice. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> I have too many things attached to my head. <laughs> got glasses and more glasses, masks. So I wanted to talk to you about, on Thanksgiving, about 
a special aspect of Thanksgiving that is super important to me, and I'm sure that you'll agree that it's important to you. I wanted to talk to you about being thankful for friends. Um, many years ago now, I don't know, 24 or, yeah, about 24 years ago, my husband died very suddenly, um, completely unexpectedly, and the first call that I made was to my friend. And the second call that I made was to my friend. And they literally came over in what they were wearing, which was their pajamas. And that was in a day when you didn't go anywhere in your pajamas. And they came and they literally held me together through that unbelievable time. Several years ago, one of my best friends, uh, her husband was diagnosed with throat cancer and he was hospitalized for a bit, had a tracheotomy and she took him home and the next day he, he suffocated literally in her arms. It was horrendous. God literally woke me up in the night to take her call. You were saying, Don, it, that God does these things and you don't really know how, but it's just God. That was a God thing. Friends held her together through that time. I have a friend with me today, uh, Terry, um, who's uh, an amazing friend who works at our house doing amazing things for our family. Probably one of the most amazing things is he makes this fabulous Caesar salad that would make everybody's mouth water if you're even remotely a lover of garlic. But he does very physical things with his hands. He's made a beautiful um, area downstairs in our basement for my husband. He's helped us renovate two bathrooms and our kitchen. It just, it, I, I said to him yesterday, he said, Terry, I was just in my bathroom, which we just finished this week. And it's like, I love my bathroom and I love my kitchen and I love my upstairs bathroom. They're just so beautiful. Another friend, Dawn, it's, te it's teacher, it's preacher appreciation day. He is a teacher. Definitely our teacher. Oh my goodness, I am so grateful for the way that he inspires us. He loves us and inspires us to keep going, to keep cheerful. I have never known a more cheerful, encouraging, and that means so much to me because I've had some not so cheerful and encouraging preachers in my life, and he is, and it has made my faith grow so much. Thank you. When you get together with your friends and you start to laugh, right? And you laugh and you laugh and it gets bigger and bigger until literally you can hardly catch your breath because you're laughing so hard. Now, you know, science tells us that that releases endorphins and all that stuff, but really, oh my gosh, what a gift that is, right? To be able to sit and laugh together. Lots of times it's around a meal. Amazing. Sometimes we get discipled by friends and by discipling, I mean, both encouraging us, but sometimes doing exactly what Don said in his message, sometimes it's that strong no when we need to hear it. And I'm so grateful for that. I 
my, honestly, my gratitude for that aspect of God and his working in my life is amazing. I was an incredibly negative person and I don't consider myself to be negative anymore. It's a complete transformation, really the same way that ter what Terry did with my bathroom and kitchen. It's a transformation. And I'm so grateful that I have an optimistic view of, of, of that because of my friends. Thanksgiving dinner. You know, we hang around and we catch up with Pete, with our family or our friends, whoever's there. We really are reclining at the table, whether we're sitting in a chair, or whether we're sitting on the floor, or whether we're sitting out in the backyard with our feet up, which is my favorite place to be, um, hanging out. We're, we're there with friends. We've got, we've got closeness. We've got family. I, I'm just so grateful for that. And, and it was interesting. I was looking at the scriptures reclining at the table because I knew that Jesus did it so long. And it's one of the things that is mentioned in all four gospels. It's, Ma it's Matthew 26, 20, Mark 14, 18, Luke 22, 14, and John 13, 23, among, among others. But it's like, wow, that reclining at the table, and we know most of the time food was involved with that, what an incredible blessing it is to be able to do that with one another. It's awesome. In John 15, in verses 15 and 17, the Bible says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. This is my command. Love each other. In 1 Peter 4, verse 8, the Bible says, Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. So our job is just to respond to one another in love, even when we disagree. And that happens sometimes. We need to call ourselves to be thankful for the precious gift that friendship is, for the precious gift that is family, for the precious brother and sisterhood that we have, for the precious gift of being sons and daughters, both of those whom God has given us to love, our own sons and daughters, but also that we are called sons and daughters of God himself. So today as we celebrate Thanksgiving and tomorrow, let's remember this incredible gift that both our friends are to, our, to us, to support us, to love us, to correct us, to pull us in, to make us laugh, to just cheer our hearts, to relax with, and sometimes not so relaxing, but okay. <laughs> but just enjoy that and remember, we are friends of God. God is our friend. Jesus is our friend. His, his life, his death, his burial, and, and our acceptance of him as our Lord and Savior makes us friends with him. And so as we celebrate communion, let's, let's pray together just to have this big feeling of gratitude that, that both celebrates our, our, our oneness with one another, our oneness with God, with Jesus, but also our oneness with this incredible gift that we've given of friends, family, and loved ones. Let's pray. Dearest Lord God, thank you so much for everything that you give us. Truly, you know what, if we stopped and thought for microseconds, we would be overwhelmed with gratitude. And yet so often we 
kind of forget that part. And I pray that as we take communion today, as we participate in the, uh, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, God, that, um, that we can remember that he's our brother. We, he's our friend. We're each other's friends. We love each other and we love you so deeply and are so grateful that because of his sacrifice, we are called your friends, we are called your family, God, and we are um, loved and protected and cared for and, and nurtured and corrected by you, by your word. And God, it's just so overwhelming. Help us to be filled to, I don't know, the fullness, our cups runneth over with gratitude, God, that, uh, that you have chosen us, that you continue to choose us, that no matter what we do, we are your friends. God, we love you. We thank you so much. Please bless our time of communion. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, so today's uh, scripture reading is, um, I think, one of the most interesting scripture readings in that it's a response. And so I'm going to invite you to say the response um, as I read, and I'll indicate that with my hand. Um, and your line is, his love endures forever. And I would love it if you read it, if you say that line, his love endures forever like you really mean it. <laughs> okay. This is Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. His love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt. And brought Israel out from among them with a mighty hand and outstretched arm. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder and brought Israel through the midst of it, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. His love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness. His love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings. His love endures forever. And killed mighty kings. His love endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites. His love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan. His love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance. His love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures forever. He remembered us in our lowest state. His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His, his love, love endures forever. grateful for your presence with us today and for those who will be watching this as time goes by. We wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. And today has also been called Preacher Appreciation Day. And so I want to combine both of these today. 
First, I want to begin by saying that this preacher appreciates you. The song that was sung by this wonderful man, Luciana Pavarotti, called Nessun Dorma, is a song of thanksgiving and appreciation. It tells us to keep loving even when troubles arrive, and they do, and that love sustains. As believers, we receive thanks and we give thanks. And today, I want to talk about being people of thanksgiving and giving and receiving appreciation. It's interesting how on occasion the Holy Spirit works. I was thinking about the sermon that I was going to be preaching and am preaching today, and I just opened up a book that I haven't opened for a while, and I came across Chuck Swindoll, and he tells this story. Some of you remember Bob Hope, and his line constantly was, thanks for the memories. I want to read this article to you from Charles Swindoll. While jogging early this morning, I found myself humming the tune Bob Hope immortalized during several wars. I can still remember his tailor-made lyrics fitted to each occasion. He sang them to lonely soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines from steamy jungles to frozen reservoirs, from the decks of aircraft carriers to makeshift platforms on windswept sand dunes. As guys and gals in uniform laughed and cried, screamed and sipped Pepsi or Coke, they always anticipated Hope's finale as he took the mic and crooned, and thanks for the memories. I remember it well, Christmas of 1958 on Okinawa. I was homesick, missing my wife, counting the days, so when the veteran entertainer sang his closing song, I sang along with him in a flood of memories. I recall how grateful I was for that tour of duty, the lessons I had learned, the disciplines I had begun to employ, thanks to the navigators, the books that I had read, the missionaries I had met, the places I had visited, the journal I had kept, the letters I had written, the verses I had memorized even things I had witnessed inside a Marine Corps barracks, and mostly the call I had received from God to enter ministry. Then all the way through seminary, I pontificated to family and classmates that there were three places I would never minister. I would never minister in Texas, New England, and California, especially Southern California. But God knows best, because I ended up preaching in Texas, New England, and California. Looking back, all I can do is smile and sing thanks for the memories. I'm doing that a lot these days as I recall the various things God had done in me and through me and for me, and sometimes in spite of me. And I can't help but give him praise in my heart. Pastoring a church has to be the highest of callings. In this position, one has the privilege of touching life at its tenderest points, of walking with pain through its darkest valleys, of proclaiming truth in its purest form, of confronting sin in its ugliest scenes, of doing your best to model integrity though it's hard extremes. While everyone is watching as well as when no one is looking, it's no wonder to me why it requires a God-given Holy Spirit calling before one can begin ministry and maintain ministry. And after all these years, I say a resounding thanks for the memories, for the conversations that have occurred, the addictions that have been conquered, the marriages that have been restored, the fractured lives that have been mended, these memories stay with me and revisit me often as I thank him for his faithfulness. Who knows 
what other surprises God has over the horizon. I do not know what lies ahead, but for today I pause and praise him and thank him for the memories. So Thanksgiving appears to us in multiple forms. It's not just food, but it's appreciation as well as Thanksgiving. And that was the song by Luciano Pavarotti. Nassan Dorma is a song of love, of thanksgiving, of appreciation. And today I wanna to talk about being people of thanksgiving and appreciation. And as I said at the start, this preacher appreciates you. First of all, I wanna talk about thanking God by looking up. Here's an article I came across it talks about thanking God by looking up, thanking God every day by looking around, and thanking God by looking within. It's not a long article, but I found it helpful. Maybe you will too. Looking up, I thank God. I thank you, Lord, for your sovereign control over our circumstances, for your holy character in spite of our sinfulness for your commitment to us, even when we wander astray, for your word that gives us direction, for your love that holds us close, for your gentle compassion in our sorrows, for your constant faithfulness through our highs and especially through our lows, for your strong no, when we need to hear no, for your surprising yes, when we lack the faith to see it or believe it, for your wise wait when we are impatient and rash, for your understanding when we are confused, for your Holy Spirit that enlightens our eyes, for your grace that removes our guilt. Thank you, Lord, for all you are and all you do and all you say. Looking up, we thank God. And then looking around, we thank God. Thank you, Lord, for our wonderful country. So blessed, so unique, for close family times, so affirming, so enjoyable, for teachers, mentors, personal heroes who spur us on, for an opportunity to be of help and encouragement to others, for the embrace of a friend who really cares, for the joy of seeing our children and grandchildren grow and laugh and learn, for an occupation that enables us to make a living for a place to live, clothes to wear, food to eat. And then looking within, we thank God. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of good health, a hidden treasure easily overlooked, for eyes that see the beauty of your creation, for minds that are curious, creative, and competent, for memories of past pleasures and recent accomplishments, for ears that receive the world of sounds surrounding us, for the special stimulation of taste and touch, for hands to work with and legs to walk with, for heartaches that force us to rearrange our priorities, for broken dreams and lingering afflictions, for the courage to tell the truth, though it may hurt, for the determination to finish a demanding task, for a sense of humor that brings healing and hope. It's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. So we pause to declare to you, O oh Lord, these expressions of gratitude. You are indeed worthy of our highest praise. To you goes all the glory. Well, there's so many scriptures on Thanksgiving in the Bible as you know, 
All you have to do is just go to the concordance and look it up. And there are scripture after scripture after scripture. So I wrote down just a few because I like them. And maybe you will too. They're not many, but just a few. In 2 Corinthians 2 and 14, it says this. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphant procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. And then in 9.15, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, be joyful always. And then it should have a bracket. It's not always easy. <laughs> but be joyful always. Pray continually. Then we should have another bracket. Remind yourself. Remind yourself. Be always joyful. Pray continually. And give thanks, and this is so hard, in every circumstance. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Revelation chapter four and nine. All the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever. And won't it be amazing? Won't it be beyond appreciation and thanksgiving? when we close our eyes for the last time and then open them again and see the face of God and the face of Jesus and the face of God's Holy Spirit and the face of loved ones who have gone. It'll seem like just that moment. Thanksgiving and appreciation, it's beyond words. Psalm 95 says, let us come before him with thanksgiving, extol him with music and song. Thank you, Mr. Pavarotti. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, meaning we bring ourselves to the church praising and singing with appreciation and love even before we get into the doors of the church. It's who we are, people of thanksgiving, because God puts it inside of us. So we enter this gate, these church doors, with thanksgiving and this court of praise. And Paul reminds us, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Or in 1 Timothy 4, God created food, and it's good to be received with thanksgiving. That's one of the reasons why we often give thanks before we eat our food. We come together today thanking God for everything he has given to us, how much we appreciate him and how much we can appreciate others as well. And so for just a couple of comments today, today has sometimes been called, well, it has been called around the world Preacher Appreciation Day. And I said at the beginning, I appreciate you so very, very much beyond words. I started full-time preaching in 1978 while I was attending a Bible college in Ohio. It was really an extension school for what was then called Sunset School of Preaching. But I preached for a lot of years before that. I was quite young. I probably have mentioned this to you before, but even before I started grade 11 at Great Lakes High School, I would sometimes preach in small places, very small groups of people, thank goodness. And I remember the first time I preached was in Peterborough, and it wasn't at a church, it was someone's home. The coffee table was our communion table, 
and uh, someone led the prayer. And after the prayer was over, it was my turn to preach. The prayer lasted longer than my sermon, I can tell you that. And uh, I had stood behind, stood in front of a mirror and practiced my sermon over and over and over again. And I thought, good, I've got it, I've got it down. It's 15 minutes. I think it turned out to be like seven minutes when I was preaching. I'm sure they had no idea what I was trying to say, but they said, can you come back next week? It's not because they wanted me. I think it's because they wanted to help mold me. And over the years, I've so appreciated that. I've been preaching on a full-time basis for 43 years now, and I love it. And 26 years here in Beamsville, and I love it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a rewarding experience. I, I don't think it's not in, in any way uh, an exaggeration. I don't think at all that I've ever not wanted to be part of this congregation, and I'm so grateful for it. So while I was attending Great Lakes High School, especially the teachers who I had, if someone had ever told me and even said to the teachers I had that one day you are going to be the preacher of the Beamsville Church of Christ and that you're going to be there for 26 years, all of us in unison would say, that's impossible. <laughs> that's just not going to happen. But God does what God does. How many times in your life have you stopped to think, you know, that was God. Whether it was an event, situation, conversation, something else, you go, that was God. Not only was, was that God, it is God. God who is working in each one of our lives this very day. He has plans for you, Scripture says. Plans to prosper you. Plans to give you hope and a future. That's not just Bible words. That's God's work in your life. And whether we really know it or not, God knew us even before we were born. As he said, he knew the exact time and places in which you would live. So our job is, wherever we are, is to honor God and to encourage others. This preacher right here today appreciates you more than I can say. There have been so many mentors for me over the years so while I was going to Bible college in 1978, it was a community uh, called Troy, uh, Ohio, and this wonderful congregation in Portland, Indiana, was about a 45 minute drive. It was a beautiful Midwestern town and a lovely group of people. And uh, I never once ever thought, as a Canadian, that I had an accent. So the first time I went and preached in Portland, Indiana, People were smiling, and I just thought they were friendly. Actually, what they were doing was laughing because they said, you have such an English accent. You have such a British accent. We Canadians don't think that. But if you're in Midwest Ohio and in Indiana, I think they have an accent. <laughs> Let's face it, we all have accents. But they became a, a loving, wonderful group of people. It's the only congregation I've ever known where there was a father and son eldership team. Homer Smith was in his 90s. He was a brilliant man and a kind, kind gentleman. He looked like the absent-minded professor. He never really stopped to comb his hair. He was already ahead of himself. But when he stood up and spoke, it was like, wow, this is a profound man. And then his son, Paul Smith, who, becomes, who was an elder in the church, was also a wonderful man. The very first day that I was there, Paul Smith invited me to his home, and I got to know him and love him and appreciate it. And then Barb and I were engaged, and Barb came down to visit me. We went to Paul and Mary Ellen Smith's house that day for lunch, and he said, uh, I don't know if I ever told you that I'm a pilot. And uh, we said, no, you didn't. He said, well, we're going for a ride. We're going for a ride. We're going we're gonna to take a flight. I'd never been in an airplane before. And it was a small Cessna plane, 
he took us up and he said to myself, would you like to fly it? I said, not on your life. Barb said, I will. <laughs> and she did. And she flew it wonderfully so. So she said to me, in the future, you're going to buy me an airplane. <laughs> so that promise is still on hold. <laughs> so there are wonderful examples of teachers that I've loved over the years. Lynn Anderson, of course, who has been with us. Foy Anderson was a wonderful man, no relation, but a fantastic teacher. He was the one that really helped mold me when I was in Bible college. My dad, a wonderful man, kind man, helpful man. Uh, Jim McGuigan, fiery Irishman. Charles Swindoll, Charles Stanley, Landon Saunders, and so many others. But I would be remiss, and I couldn't do this job without the support and love of my sweet wife, Barb. It's, you know, it's beyond measure. You can't do this job without the guidance of God's Holy Spirit with a deep love of Scripture, with a love for God, and for the presence of Jesus Christ. So let me conclude these few remarks today, saying thank you for allowing me, as Bob Hope said, thanks for the memories. And I hope there'll be some more memories that we can make together. So here's what Paul says. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. Whew, that's a tough one. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts, will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. And remember, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Whatever you have learned or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. So from me to you, thank you, and may the God of peace go with you today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for a wonderful lesson. Uh, Don talked about Preacher Appreciation Day. Well, interesting enough, it was, uh, when I was 11 years old, it was Don's dad that walked into the projects, and I lived in the low projects because, well, I don't want to get into that, but we were very poor, and he, his dad came for every week I don't know what day it was, but it showed the Jewel Miller film strips on that little projector. And you laugh, but that's where I got my foundation, my introduction. I like to call it a LBBJ, Life Before Blue Jays, because they weren't existent. <laughs> but, you know, that, his dad gave me the fundamentals. Well, my mom was there. My brothers were out playing. But I was 11 years old, and I was very interested. And had already been invited out to church not, by a Japanese man, which a lot of you know is Ernie, and I, I'm still in contact with him. I still go out. But, I mean, I think about that. You want to be thankful? I mean, 
Though back in the set, my introduction to the project was the first day we were there, we had a window smashed in. Just, just walking to the neighborhood. It was a rough neighborhood. Yet, Don's, dad, they call him Rev. But he kind of walked, and he walked among those people, and he brought a lot of those people out of the projects into the church building. And um, that was one of his ministries, and he was well-respected. No, he could walk in there, and nobody bothered him. He had commanded that respect, because he knew that he cared for them. And so things to be thankful for, for the people that, our instrumental, like Don talked about in his life, to where the point he is today. Be thankful for the legacy of faith that's been handed down to you. And uh, thank God for giving us a time of thanksgiving in our lives, like such occasions as this. So let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the lesson today, the reminders that we have through scripture and through word, through song, through, through deeds, people in our lives, people that may impact to get us to where we are today on the road in our journey of faith and help us to show gratitude, help us to love deeply, help us to be thankful and joyful and Father, we all have a story to tell. Help us to live up to the blessings that we have in Christ Jesus and share as we go on our daily lives. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for watching or listening. The Beamsville Church of Christ meets at 4900 John Street, Beamsville, Ontario. We are currently holding in-person services following provincial COVID-19 regulations. Scripture quotations marked NIV, taken from the Holy Bible, New International Version, NIV, copyright 2011 by Biblica Inc., used by permission, all rights reserved worldwide. You can find out more about the congregation on our Facebook page or at beamsvillechurchofchrist.ca.